Hey everyone, this is Lisa Bissa from the Anti Media. We are live um, from the memorial site of where Mike Brown was killed. Um, there's some chalk here as you walk in. As you can see on the floor. And this is the site right here that we're walking towards. I'm trying to clear up the picture for y'all. We just finished Peace Fest, which was disappointing to say the least. Um, it seems like Al Sharpton is sent in whenever there's some sort of tragedy to pacify people and talk them into this uh, tactic of throwing up peace signs while bullets are being fired at loved ones and friends and children. And obviously Sharpton's been around a long time. I can't really think of him ever being effective at changing the social and political landscape of this country. So, but we're at the memorial site. We hear most people are gathering here tonight. The Outcast Bike Club is also here that we saw at Peace Fest. Thank you for tuning in. All the coverage from the media and whatnot, you know, displays that this is still a conversation. I like your hair. Ferguson's had some of the best hair I've seen in this country. Where you um, I came here from Illinois. Do you mind if I film you? Sure. sure. I'm with the anti media. This is live. Okay. She, she's the top. Oh, hi. Hi. What's your name? Deanna Washington. Hi, Deanna. I'm Lisa Bessa. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What are you doing here tonight? Well, we are a gospel group named Prophecy, and we all are members of our residents of Ferguson. So we were just here to pay our respects and help minister to the community and help uplift the spirits and let them know that. You know, God is real, and in and, and Him is where we will truly find peace. We can't always lean and depend on the justice system, but you have to know in your heart that the Creator is who's going to provide peace that surpasses all understanding. How's that going for you? So far, so good. So far, so good. I mean, as long as I know who I am and whose I am, it gives me the hope. All we have is our hope and our faith right now. That's what gets us through this situation. And we're just praying that, you know, justice will be served. How do you feel that the community coming together, what impact do you think that has had? I think it has uh, had a positive impact because I feel that all of the rioting and the negativity that has occurred from this situation has mostly been outside. It has not been the residents of Ferguson. So us true residents of Ferguson are together, are sticking together, are uplifting each other, encouraging each other through this situation, especially since our babies can't go to school. This That's the most heartbreaking part other than losing. Do you mind life. if I film? Is that the, your child? Sure. This is my godson. Hi. Hello. Our babies are being almost punished. They look forward to school and their education is being placed on hold because of this situation. So. At what point do you think, at what point where state and police violence impacts our communities, at what point, at what point as state, at, at, at what point as state, as state and police violence continues to impact our communities, at what point do you think it would ever be justified for people to rise up? in perhaps a non-godly manner is there a point where where it's enough or is there or do you fully feel that we will find it inside ourselves and it'll change just through faith that's where you have to find it first it will stop once everybody finds it in themselves and in their heart that's where it starts because 
you have to start with yourself. You have to start like the back of our shirt says. You have to be the example. A true leader leads by example. And so if everybody leads by example how it should be, everybody will fall into place. Thank you very much. You're welcome. God bless you. You too. And then there's some beautiful signs here. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Oh, that's amazing. What is that? Okay. Let me see. Oh, sorry. There's a hole there. Hands up. Please don't shoot me. Michael Brown needs justice. Ferguson, Missouri, August 9, 2014. What does yours say? And what's your name? Me? What's your name? AK Shortcake. Shortcake? Hi. And what's your name? Miss Ona. Hi, Ona. What are you doing here today? Oh, well, I wanted to be a part of the campaign. I wanted to do something a little different. Instead of showing signs about stuff, I wanted everybody to put their signature on here to show the pals that they did care about Michael. So I wanted, you know, signatures here. And I also would like to say, ma'am, if it's possible, I can say I would like for every seat that participated in the Michael Brown March or protest to challenge me on one of these cards. So what? To challenge me on one of these cards. On one of those cards? Yeah, yeah. Everybody, every oh. city and state that participated. Oh, so yeah. she would like to see one of these cards from every city where we had one in LA. Oh, you do? Okay. We had one, yes, to make one of these cards. Okay, there's a the there brown brown title right there. We like to see Okay, hello. Run it around. What's your name? My name's James. Hi, James. I'm Lisa Bissa with the Anti Media. How are you? I'm fine. And where are you from? I'm from St. Louis. You're from St. Louis. Did you know Mike Brown? Oh, yeah. He was, he was a friend. Yeah, and he loves spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> I'm sorry you lost your friend. Okay. Thank you for doing this. Sure. Keep up the fight. God bless. Oh, yeah. God bless. BBQ, man. <laughs> no loot, no shit. Beautiful. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, she wants to sign. Hello. Hi. So this is like the memorial hair. site. I like your hair. Oh, thank you. I think Ferguson has some of the best hair that I have seen in this country. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> Where are you from? I live in LA. I'm from New York City. Oh, thank you guys for coming all the way to LA to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all travel like the world. Daily 2000 miles. Wow. 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 That was here. And these. Oh, I love glitter. A beautiful sign here. here says no justice no peace and then you have there's a lot of cars coming down this street I don't know if you can see the amount of traffic that has been driving by the memorial site, but it's quite a lot. I have a feeling it's not normally this much. There are a number of apartment buildings.
she's giving water to the flowers. She did. really hard to be here. <laughs> There's another site right here. We came from the way, we came from the way. I forget my birth year. Who was on the What's your name? I'm Angel. Do you want to look up for me? I'm so Do you want to look up for me? I just said no. I'm talking to someone named Amanda. She just gave me a hug. It's a pretty emotional side. It's hard to be here. Um, but do you mind? Yeah, I'm mine. Okay. Ah, oh, you're gonna be a. And you knew him. I know my grand. I know my grand while we were in the school. You went to what? We went to school with me. You went to school together? Yeah. You were friends? Uh, have you been out here every day? Uh -uh, yeah, yeah, I've been here today. Your first time? Every night I come out here. This is beautiful. What was he like as a person? Do you mind? Uh, he, he liked it as a person. He felt the truth of the way how we approached it. Yeah. He was a good friend. Yeah. How many years did you know my friend? I know him for four years. Yeah? Yeah. Do you live around here? No, I live in um, Shallow Avenue. And this is your daughter? No, this is my uh, cousin. This is your cousin? What's your name? Sierra. Hi, Sierra. How are you? <laughs> That's your sister? <laughs> Mama, come here. So you probably see there's cars that are driving by constantly. Is this normal for cars to always be coming through uh -huh. here like this? Oh really? So I guess the cars are normal. The people probably are. I'm gonna turn my chat on. Sorry about my fan. Uh, hey everyone, I just turned on my chat. Thank you for chatting up. I didn't have it on. It was, I'm not really sure. This is kind of an emotional place. Um, part of the Trail of Flowers is still there. There's a lot of people gathered here paying respects.
I'm not next to Dylan, but when I see him, Patty, I will. And thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> Big thanks to everybody from Global Rev. Thanks for restreaming this. Um, it's a hard site, something we're a little bit too familiar with in LA. Oh, I'm saying it's hard to be here. Can I film you? I'm with the anti media. We're grassroots revolutionary media. Oh, we're anti mainstream media. <laughs> What's your name? Hi, I'm, I'm Lisa Bessa. What is it? Lisa Bessa. Lisa Bessa, Where are you from? You came here from Detroit. Came here from LA. Oh, People refer to as such as you do as the main media. <laughs> you have a lot of um, killer cops in Detroit. Uh, nothing like here. In LA. LA and New York. Yeah, it's. it's super hard because our experience on going has been that they'll drag this out for years when until the support fades and then there's never been justice. <laughs> so it's like seeing the outcome so many times is just hard. And yeah, it's really pretty though. Since last night. Yeah, the memorial's really beautiful. There's a lot of people here. Um, not as many. At the other site we were at last night, but apparently this is where a lot of people are gathering tonight. Um, they have this really cool little van thing. It's got free food. Oh, how beautiful. And they're playing music. Oh, I remember you from last night. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you can you remind me your name? I'm John. Alyssa. John Bonds. My friends call me JB. What's up, Bessa? That's what's up. What's up? We out here. Free food, free water. That's we want to no loot, no shoot truck. We should be in the last thing you know right now. And if we not, then you need to call me. My name is John Bonds again. People call me JB. My number is 314-496-9581. Call me. Let's put our hands together. Let's figure out how we can do, how we can duplicate what we're doing here in your community. You know what I'm saying? Uh, peaceful protests. People sharing with people. You know, I started, come, I could have came out here and started, I could have came out here and sold the food and made the money. You know what I'm saying? But it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been right at least to me, you know, so I said, you know what, I'm going to take me a little money and I'm going to buy some food and some water and some ice and I'm going to come out here and I'm going to give it away. And now I got people coming up and, and bringing us water and pampers and donating, uh, helping us out, bringing us ice and sodas. They calling me, they pay in me, they sending donations from all over the world. We need it to keep on going. Do you want to give your PayPal link so that people are watching my stream right now? You're live um, on the internet. I got a, uh, I got a, that's a good thing. Hi, internet. I can't really see this light she got is blinding me. I hope I look good. You look great. All right, that's what's up. Uh, my PayPal, if you call me, I, I can give you my email address. Okay. It's N is in Nancy, B is in Paul, M is in Mary. L is in Larry, L is in Larry, C is in Charlie at yahoo.com. Send me an email. I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I'll, at the end of the night, once we make sure that all the women and children and all the peaceful protesters go home safely, then I go home myself and I make sure, you know, that's when I check my emails. Um, my phone is always on. You call me, send me an email, send me a text message. Just, just help me, help me do what we're doing. Now. 
help him. Appreciate it. No loot, no shoot. We free food out here. Help him help the community. Because this is what we got to do. We got to share our resources. Absolutely. Because that's part of the problem. Absolutely. We've been out here every day. I'm hoarse because I've been screaming the past two weeks. You know, I'm 45 years old. Just turned 45 in July. You know, I'm a military trained. So I've been in combat situations, you know, in high risk situations, you know, where the threat level is really high. But I've never in my life stood in the middle of a street with protesters on one side trying to do a peaceful protest and a whole line of angry uh, militant police officers and uh, I'm telling you if you weren't out here you probably would not believe me but if the threat the press that was out here seen it for themselves. Those police was itching at the bit. They could not wait to just run over and bust us upside our head or lock us up or tear gas us or shoot us with rubber bullets. They've been censoring the media since the media's been here. They slamming reporters' heads up against the wall. They try to give these sterilized, um, uh, sterilized, uh, what do they call them, photo ops. Yeah. They trying to give these little sterilized photo ops and show the world a watered down version. Like, oh yeah, see, everything's great because they don't want you guys here. You know, they don't want the world to see what they really do. It's wrong. It's fundamentally wrong. We haven't even buried the first young brother. We got another young brother murdered within what? A week and a half later. We haven't even had the, the, the time. And we got that one on tape, thank God. I would say this to all your blog readers, whoever within the sound of my voice. If you, uh, if you feel like you're Mike Brown in your town, then what I suggest you do is make sure it's your cell phone or whatever. Equip your car with cameras. Make sure your cell phone is fully charged. If you don't feel safe when you get pulled over by the police, I'm not telling you to go into a high speed chase. What I'm telling you is to be smart. Call 911 and let 911 know that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm scared or whatever. The police are trying to pull me over. Can I go to, uh, instead of pulling over on this large only road or whatever, and it being you and, and if you really afraid of the police, call 9 one one and have them uh, have them designate an area with which you can pull over safely and then do your best to comply with the officer's demand. Um, pull over at a gas station. Pull over somewhere safe. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that you do everything you can to document what you're going through with the police, but you gotta follow the letter of the law. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually streaming live on Ustream, which is an application that can be downloaded to people's phones. Okay. So if they feel there is a police threat, they can activate Ustream okay. and they can stream right from their phone their video to the internet. So even if their phone is confiscated, okay. their streams are ready in the ether. So if you're spreading the word, maybe you can tag that on for me. Yeah, that absolutely. they can download Ustream, it's free. Their absolutely. video goes straight to the internet. Nobody can delete it. That's what's up. Except them. And that's what you want to do. You, you know, do your best to protect yourself. You know, you can't just go on a high speed chase and say you were scared and afraid that, you know, obviously you were scared because you're running. You're going to have to call 911. <laughs> well, first. I'm not comfortable pulling over on some lonely note road you're, with you're a police me. officer behind me. He's a man with a gun. Exactly. Usually a man. Exactly. Sorry, most of the you time. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, you know, and I mean, you looking at it from a female perspective, not take what you feel about getting pulled over. And, and amplify that probably two and a half times. You know what I'm saying? And cause that's what we feel. That's what we're going through about it. Like, we're like, oh, you know, am I, the, am I gonna get shot down? You know what I'm saying? Are they gonna run up on my car and snatch me out of my car? You know, I, I just wanna live and, and, and be a, a positive member of society. I wanna contribute, I wanna work. I want a job, you know, I've been reading so much on the internet, the, the, the uh, uh, different groups and whatnot on the internet the past couple weeks of, you know, it's just so funny that privileged America has such a disconnect. They just totally disconnected from what the reality of it is. You know, th these are the folks who believe, they totally believe the police are right 100% of the time until they get a parking ticket and then they go ballistic. 
over a parking ticket. <laughs> Imagine if you know Privilege I mean? America wasn't yeah. for a second how they you would know, feel. I was just in Starbucks. What do you mean? What's your badge number? Come on, let me say that to him. You know what I mean? They, I might come up missing. You feel me? That's how yeah. we feel. And and as as a people, we just like you know, you know. I hope that other brothers and sisters in you know whether you black, white, Latino, whatever you know, you know, if you fit into our category, then I hope you understand. You need to band together with the people in your community that are like you, that are most at risk of becoming, you know, a statistic and y'all need to organize and get to know each other. You know, I don't think the world really understands that since this happened, the black on black crime rate in our city has took a nosedive. Why? Because we ain't fighting each other. We realize that we got a greater enemy. We ain't fighting each other no more. Who's the enemy? The enemy is a racist cop with a badge. The enemy is a police officer that would rather give me the death penalty instantly in the street than let the justice system deal with me. The, uh, uh, you know, the, the enemy is someone who doesn't want to give us the same opportunity to, to work or become productive citizens, but then you want to turn right back around and call us lazy animals and, and, and all this. Those people are the real racists. Having money don't, just because you got more money than us don't make you not a racist. You know what I'm saying? If you really, if you not a racist, then you should be praying for everybody. You should, you know what I'm saying? You should be able, you should be willing to give everybody a first shot. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't stack the deck against me and then sit up and then try to talk me down about what I'm trying to do or whatever, or what I'm unable to do. Cause I'm disadvantaged, or I got a record, or I, you know, I'm brown, or I got dreads, or I got tattoos on my face, or I sag a little bit, or I smoke weed, or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? And then turn around and say, ah, those guys should pull themselves up by their bootstraps. You know what I mean? They hypocrite. They, they don't be hypocritical. You know what I'm saying? Don't be hypocritical. Be be unbiased. Pray for both families. Two families got destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Two families, you know what I mean. I don't personally hate Daryl uh, Daryl Wilson, you know what I mean. I hate what he did, but there's a difference between hating him and hating what he did. You see what I'm saying? That's a real non-racist statement to make. I don't hate that man. I pray for him. You know what I'm saying? I pray for him and I pray for Mike. You know what I'm saying? Because neither one of their lives is. I mean, you know, neither one of their families' lives are ever going to be the same. You know, Mike's not here. And old boy's life is ruined. But you know what? The way racist America thinks, he probably got a job somewhere in Utah, Colorado, one of them old militia states, you feel me? <laughs> now, no disrespect to my people in Utah, Colorado. <laughs> you know, I actually, I kind of want to go to Colorado right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In but, this heat, I don't hey, blame you. Well, I ain't talking about, yeah, they got that heat, from what I understand. <laughs> 420, is that what time it is? Oh, man. Oh, the um, <laughs> I'm from California. Oh, so. you already know. Come on now. Hey, I need to come visit you. Uh. But, but for real, though, you know, back to the seriousness of it. Like, I'm just saying, you know, come on, we, you know, they need to, they need to stop oppressing us we don't need to be oppressed we need an opportunity you know what i'm saying you. you give me the same set of circumstances and and give me an ability to make it and become independent business owner homeowner car owner you know people don't want to be renting all stacked on top of each other all their life you, these aren't condominiums you know what i'm saying people you know if they had their choice they wouldn't live here they want to live in one of those ranch style houses on the other side of the street you know what I'm saying? But they fighting their best to keep us pinned all up in here. And then you want to come in here and tell people that they can't walk across the street. Look at the, you know what I'm saying? How does he know, you know, play devil's advocate for a minute. Let's say there wasn't no incident at the store, right? How did the officer know that because this guy is crossing the street, he could have been going, you see how these apartments are. If I'm crossing the street right here, I could be going anywhere. I could have been going to that building, that building, that building. You never know where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? So for you to just, for, for uh, an officer who, when they they changed the story, but the first story we got 
on record from the police chief at the news conference that he had no idea that they were involved in any type of, you know, incident. They like, didn't know about the exactly. story until after but the But now, fact. since the lawyers is involved and they trying to, you know, sew it up, now it 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 makes it would make sense that he knew. Yeah. It ain't no way, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I ain't no cop or nothing, but I ain't no fucking dummy. Ain't no way that if a police is trying to deal with me once you on a call you on that call you ain't listening to no radio that becomes background chatter ain't nobody listening to that you ain't listening to what you dealing with a, a person in front of you you see what i'm saying as a police officer they you know they don't train you to be like this on the radio and trying to get my license or information or t or deal with whatever you're dealing with with me that ain't that don't even that is not even believable and that's why people are mad because it's you know they, they don't cover the shit up let the truth be the truth I hear you. I they hear trying to they trying to cover it up, and that's what making that's what make to where we can't believe nothing they say. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad the world was is here to see it for themselves because we our voices could not be we couldn't yell loud enough for the whole world to hear until we until we had to do something to let y'all know and let the world know. Hey, this is a cry for help here. You know what I'm saying? We people could have been broken them buildings and took whatever they want. Ain't nobody thinking about no weave or no one rim. You know what I mean? What I'm gonna do with one rim on my car? You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't about that that merchandise. It was about a wake up call. It was it was a message. You we, know what I'm saying? You you know I'm not we we not finna just let you just come in our just take all our money and keep taking our money. We don't own them, none of those stores. You know, and I apologize to the, the, the owners of the stores, you know, the, the, the Sam's Meat Market, the, you know, the, um, you know, the, the beauty supply, the other stores. But, they're, you know, in any war, which it is a war against the, against urban brothers, it ain't just black brothers. I, I, you know what I'm saying? In war, there's collateral damage. You know what I'm saying? If Bin Laden is in that building and I got credible intelligence and Bin Laden is in that building, and that's gonna be the only time I can get it. Guess what? Whoever in there going with them well, today. We, our government, our government does that all the time. Yeah, right? This is nothing today, compared to Iraq. Today, <laughs> Ferguson's you know nothing saying? compared to Iraq. And 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 your your people, they need to understand. Them police ain't responsible for the peace on the streets. We responsible for the police on the street. I mean, excuse me, the peace in the streets. They not responsible. They didn't stop us. They didn't stop what happened. We stopped it. We said we ain't gonna do it no more. We have some uh, viewers that are talking to us. One okay. Person, you got Rise. some questions? Well, Rice said, well, if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. But Rice says two families are destroyed by this corrupt system, and yes. they aren't the only one. Yes. We're here from LA, so I don't know if I told you the story of Giselle yes. Ford, who was stopped on an investigative Am I stop. I see steam rising. But they, no, it's okay. the heat. Okay. But we had a very similar situation in Los Angeles, only there was no quick stop incident. Right. And he was shot in the back and executed while down on the floor and he had mental health issues. Yeah. And um and the response was sure. the response was peaceful protest and his autopsy report is still being withheld. The family does not know the name. Okay. of the killer and right. when they went to the DA's office they were actually given the webmaster's email address uh -huh. and told to contact them right. so Just what do you around. think why what do, do you the think? police think if the police oh. are some, they should be in most communities members of the community in which they serve right that means that you know I don't want some officer from 75 miles away from here coming over here with his experiences and how it is in his rural hick town you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then come over here and try to tell me how to live in my town. That ain't how it go. You need to be of the community in which you serve because the police officers, most of the ones that are from the community in which they serve, they understand. They come into it with an understanding like, okay, I know what I'm dealing with. So sometimes they give, they, they, they'll they give you a pass. You see what I'm saying? They not, they not coming over here like, oh, I can't wait to get over there and beat one of them niggas upside the head. Come on now. So, but what do you, so, but here in Ferguson, this is, this is going to go, this is going to go to trial rather swiftly and they've gotten a lot of attention. So what do you think the difference is between Ferguson and LA? We had two men shot and killed unarmed within eight days and they're not doing anything. The families have been completely blown off. 
Um, um, so what do you know, think is the difference between the response to Ferguson and Los Angeles? Now I would say this, because people keep, I, I, this, I get this every day. It's not Ferguson. This is St. Louis. Yeah. Ferguson is just happens to be the county in which we're standing right now. St. Louis, you got St. Louis City, you got St. Louis County, which is made up of uh, over 90 municipalities and 10 unincorporated areas. And then we got the Metro East, East St. Louis, Belleville, all that. That draw a circle around all of that and this is all St. Louis. You know, everybody wanna say Ferguson, Ferguson, Ferguson. No, we all St. Louis. Because most of these, some of these municipalities are so small, you could walk probably a block and a half, two blocks, and you in another one. You know what I'm saying? Like I could drive between now and the time I make it home, which is probably what ten minutes from here, I'm gonna go through probably ten or fifteen different jurisdictions. That means I could get pulled over and get ten different tickets between here and the time I make it home. And I'm dealing with ten different pol police stations, ten different courts I gotta go to. Some of them on the same day. How am I supposed to be in two different places at one time? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and they don't speak to each other. And all it is is a big money machine. We don't have no jobs to begin with. We don't have the opportunity to begin with. You think I really got the money to be up in the court? And you don't go, you get a bench work. Now you're on the run. You know what I'm saying? Now you got warrants. Now you can't get a job because as soon as they do the record, you know what I mean? It just, it's, it's, it's just a systematic lockout. Like, you know what I mean? No job, no hope. No, no, you know what I mean? That and for so long without seeing any way out, people become desperate. You know what I'm saying? But you give a person a chance to, you know, a chance to like make something of themselves, or you know, be, uh, maybe own a home, or you know what I'm saying? Like get out of a rented situation, maybe open up a business, maybe get some job training. You know, 500 police officers earning hazard pay, overtime. Um, you know double time, working 12 hour shifts, standing around waiting on something to happen that ain't even gonna happen. Most of those police are still getting that money. So police already, they already good. They already got a job and a place to stay in a house. You know what I mean? And they got the ultimate. They got a badge and a gun. So they, they tied in, they can do no wrong. But they, what about us? What about us? And you wanna, you, you don't tell me I need to pull myself up by my bootstraps. I do more. I do more on a daily basis than most of those people. You know what I'm saying? That that'll make a statement like that, and they got way more money and resources than me. But how many at-risk people have you hired this month? I know I done hired four or five. How many people have you fed this week? I know I done fed a couple thousand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sorry, right. I get passionate about it. No, no, but, no, no. I think um, it's beautiful. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I don't want to hold you up because I know you're no, doing an important, important That's why I'm job. Because I don't want to go blind. <laughs> I know you're doing an important job here. I'm cool. But if, I just put some can I get on, one of them me. awesome hugs? Sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Thank you so much. Thank you. Get the word out. Oh, I so am. You, you got have a, my number. And you have a bunch of viewers here. England says hello. We got people hey, doing some all the I want to come to England. I, hey, I, let me get a stamp. Somebody send me an invitation. <laughs> I'll come to your city, your town, your country. I got a message you know what I'm saying? from somebody in Egypt. Who in wanted Egypt? Me, he wanted me to share with people in Ferguson. Okay. So I'm going to tell you because I haven't told him. So he said, please deliver this message to the brave people in Ferguson from Egypt's revolutionaries. Your struggle is our struggle. Your defiance is our defiance. Your government publicly criticizes our dictators while diplomatically praising them, secretly supporting them, officially cooperating with them, and militarily arming them to us, to kill us, rob us, and control our fate. Three and a half years ago, we revolted against the police brutality and the tyrants in the Middle East. We thought some Western countries might help, but instead we found them replacing them with new ones. No one, yeah. no one will help a people of one nation except the people of another. Governments only will help each other or conspire against others. Right. For humanity, let's unite. For dignity, let's stand for each other. People for people, humans for humans. So it's a war against the haves and the have-nots. You know what I'm saying? It's a war against, it's, 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 it's the haves and the have-nots. You know what I'm saying? More jobs equal less crime. Who do you think runs our government? I don't know. That's that's you huh? know. Say. Close, <laughs> close corporations. It's say. Uh, yeah. And bankers. Same. Right. Yes, definitely. That Privileged few. Now, I I think we could the say the same thing then. Because as long as you as long as the, the 1%, you if said? the elections are for sale, 
You know what I mean? If, if elections are for sale and you're the only one with money, then you're the only one determining who gets elected. Um, Seth, Seth from Arizona, thank you so much for uh, for reformatting my stream. I really appreciate it. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Somebody said to ask you about the. Sh oh, I do. What's your name? What was that question? Oh well, some things was to ask you about the Powell shooting. Um, that that the other one here. Yep. Um, I've been out here dealing with that one. You might want to ask somebody else. I've been out here dealing with it. I mean, did, I haven't even had a chance to figure out what's going on with that one because I've been out here on this one. I, I'm, I'm out here How 10, 12, 13 hours a day. I haven't had a chance to even figure it out. You know what I mean? I, I have, I'm working on two hours of sleep a night. Um, the rest of the, my waking day is somewhere at Sam's or Restaurant Depot trying to get some food and water and some other provisions to come out here and give away to these people. I need donations. You know, if, you, if you're local, you know what I mean? Get in touch with me. Um, Can you tell me your email address one more time? It's or? N is in Nancy, P is in Paul, M is in Mary, L is in Larry, L is in Larry, C is in Charlie at yahoo.com. My phone number is 314-496-9581. My name is John. My hood, my hood name is JB. And he's um, not looking at the camera because I got a bright flash in his eye. So thank um, you so much. You're you. amazing. I thank love you for feeding the people. I love, okay, I love you, you, you too. Um, what, send me the link. Text me the link, or I get your phone or whatever. We exchange. If you got a business card, I'm on you stream. I'm with the anti media. Okay, Are you on Facebook? Uh, I am. And my name's Elizabeth, so you can find me on Facebook. All these streams will be on there. Okay. Record. That because so I've done me. so many interviews, I wanna, I wanna make sure that I, I can, I can, I can join your group or Absolutely. someone else's group. We can friend me on. You know, we can. We need to interconnect and link up with each other. Absolutely. There's, you know, somewhere on the planet, there's somebody just like us out here wanting to make a difference and they need the support. So we like minded people need to come together and, and begin to introduce ourselves to each other and work with each other. I don't have all the answers for my community or whatever. I'm doing my part. I got a big truck. I got some barbecue. It's a no brainer. I got water. It's a no brainer. I might hit you up for some of that water. I'm That's, what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> Thank you Somebody so much. Somebody send us some donations. Send some donations. Let's keep this food supply going for the community. You see We've it. got the no loot, no shoot truck. Free food. Free food. No shoot, no loot. Oh, I want to get a picture. Crap, how do I do this with the camera? Can you get this picture for me? <laughs> I want to get this picture. How do I take a snapshot? Anyone know how I could take a snapshot? with my stream. I guess I can't do it. I wish I could. I would get a shot of this, but Cassandra Rules has got it covered. Got it covered. That's right our my girl. email address. When I get home, I want to see two, three hundred emails from all over the planet. Hey, Patty, I know you're watching my stream. Can you get his email address and ask people to help support the No Shoot, No Loot truck so we can keep the free food flowing right, out bro. here in St. Louis? I would really appreciate it. I'm not on the Internet right now, but okay. we have other people that are doing it. Thank right. you so much. I will see you. We're here for a few days. And I need to, I'm on. I need to get your information so I can get the link so I can see. Absolutely. I'm Lissa Bissa on okay. Facebook. L-I-S-S-A-B-I-S-S-A, -S 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 and I'm with the Anti-Media. How long are you here for? You can't, you can't with use. I'm, well, I have a, I opened up my schedule at least till September, depending on what happens. Okay. So. Anytime you need an urban perspective on anything that's going on, <laughs> call me. Thank you so much. I can, I'm Mr. Make It Happen. Mr. Make It Happen. No shoot, no loot giving out free food. He's got barbecue and water. We're at the site, the memorial site, where Mike Brown was killed. I can't use my phone while streaming. I know, I want to take a picture. I should have brought a separate camera. Thanks mm -hmm. for the advice, Patty. Well, I can, um, they can probably take one on mine and then I can text it to your number. I don't know. I, I want to get a picture with you. Are you going to be here tomorrow? You got that, yeah. If I'm, I'm not over this. here, if we're not over, tomorrow's the funeral. Oh, and day so, after tomorrow. Are you so, uh, yeah, you? I'll be out. Tomorrow's the funeral, so I'm gonna go to the funeral. I'm not gonna give away any food tomorrow. I will do, I know it's gonna be hot, so I'm gonna have water. I'll, I'll be doing water and maybe snow cones, um, just to cool, just to keep everybody hydrated and cool, that's it. Okay. I won't do food tomorrow, but uh, day after tomorrow, we're gonna be right back out here with the food and the drink. We're bringing the grill out. 
you know, and, you know, we just try to feed the community and keep the community together. This is a community reunion is what this is. They got some amazing barbecue in St. Louis. I had some today. I had barbecue sauce all over me. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Hold on. So I am going to go back to, I see someone requesting I go back to the person that I was speaking with. Okay. So I've got him right here. Thank you, you so go. much. There are people who want to talk to you. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm doing all right about yourself. Good. I'm sorry about the bright light. The light's really so bright, so most people aren't going to look at it. I'm not looking at it. Um, where are you from? I'm from around here. You're from around here? And what are you doing here tonight? Well, actually, my grandmother stayed next door from where I stayed. So that means he stayed next door to me because he stayed with his grandmother. So I've been out here since day one. So you're Mike's neighbor? Right. So this is Mike's neighbor. And how long you known Mike? Uh, I've been out here for 14 months, so 13 months. Did you two hang out together? Yeah, he's my neighbor. Yeah? Right. What was he like? He was quiet. You can, I mean, like I've been telling everybody else, you can't say much about a person that's quiet. He's just a quiet person. So he was a quiet person? He's quiet, yeah. Huh? And can you tell me a bit, were you out here the day that this happened? Yeah, I came later on that day. You came later? Everybody was standing near the street. And it was still in the street. Yeah. And can you, do you mind talking a bit about that day and what you saw and what your experience I mean, was? I, that just shows that because his body was on the ground for five hours and two hours they they finally cover him up. So I mean, too much. They just showed that the cops didn't cover it and it was premeditated. I mean, it's I really don't want to say much because I really know what's going on and I know. Like, with all this stuff that's going on, it would have been, what, protesting and looting. We got drones flying around here at night. Like, it's a little more that the government not telling us. You have drones out here at night? Yes, we, we, I'm, I'm going to show you one. They come out every night. They try to arrest us when we fly drones over the cops. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, they went to TMZ when I flew one over the LAPD. <laughs> Point went out when I see it. come out every every night to five something in the morning. Is that your change back here? Yeah, taking donations. I think I don't know what I have. I don't think I have much cash. Thank you. So You're much. welcome. Keep up the awesome work. Thank, Thank you, you for doing community. this. Thank you for Thank feeding you. the community. So, how do you feel about what's been going on in this community? How do you feel about the uprising? How do you feel about losing a neighbor? How do you feel about the cops? Well, honestly, it's like I feel good, but then I feel bad because it's good that it, you know what I'm saying, it took this for people to come together. But I say it's a bad thing because what happened for people to come together, but they just all God just 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 make this way to just to let us know to, to come together. Yeah. It's like it's just a, it's a spiritual war going on. So, yeah. Like, this this is what it is. We me and Satan's playground right now. But the cops, they 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 know. They they, they the cops know. They know they they, they they better come up with a verdict. And it, it better be a good verdict. Cause somebody gonna get hurt. Somebody gonna get hurt. When does it go to court? Like tomorrow, I think someone said. It. Do you know when the, 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 the funeral is tomorrow? That's all I can say. I knew the funeral was tomorrow. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't. I don't care. I'm talking about the, the verdict. I, I ain't. I ain't tripping on little court dates. I'm talking about when they get the verdict. Wait, yeah, then, yeah. They, they just better. They better make the right call. Oh yeah. And I already know they gonna give them a slap on the wrist. The funny thing about it. You but, think so? Yeah, I already know. I already know. I I think they might. I think they might. Uh, I already, I already know. Is there a one percent conviction rate for cops? They go win. They, they better make the right call. Somebody gonna get hurt. And I'm not making no threats because they, they know. To me, people ain't gonna let this stuff keep on going down. And we, we stay over here and, and you know what I'm saying. They, anybody can be walking across the street. Even a twelve year old, they, 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 they give you right to shoot them. Like I don't understand. So. 
I don't know. Like they, it better be the right cause, or somebody gonna get hurt. Do you do you think that this is racist policing? No, nah, I think it's just Satan making his rounds. Cause they, they the governor really don't want to tell us that they 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 lost this country, and they trying to make us react so they can send the damn soldiers out here. I really know what's going on. I really know what's going on. My, my man Michael was a sacrifice. It ain't had nothing to do with nothing. And I don't I don't care who people work for. I don't know if you work for the cops, you work for I don't I don't care if you bold enough to sit in my face, I'll be bold enough to tell you. We're with the alternative media. What's I'm, good? I'm just saying, it, it don't even matter. It don't even matter. <laughs> but don't but we could be anybody. We could be everybody could be anybody. Exactly. But so you're saying that this was to actually create a problem, yeah, is you your see, belief? It, it, it was the, 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 the National Guards, drones, I can't wait to, to show you guys, because they come out every night. I'm surprised I don't see it. Over the memorial site, they fly drones. A, a drone every night. A drone every night. Do you think that's respectful to fly no, a drone they, they, over? No, it's something they're not telling us. Like they, they, didn't te they didn't tell people in America that they spent. 1.9 billion dollars on ammunition and guns this year alone for so what not for our so it, it's something more that the government not telling us how people are asking how police he, here treat people in general how, like what is there i mean it's some cool cops and it's some bad cops that, i mean that's, that's all i can say it's, it's cool cops and it's bad cops is there a heavy police presence around here ever when they when they want to and when the military was here, they're saying that he should hold up a bitcoin. There, there go right there. Go to the drone oh wait, there's right a there. drone. Wait, there's a drone right there. where? You see it all the way up there? That's big. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna go going circles. That's the drone right there. Positive. I see it every night. That big one? No, all the way over there, all the way back there. Just look all the way up in the sky. Oh, yeah. Wait, you where? See how slow it's going? It's all the way up in the sky. That's the drone. You're not gonna be able to see that. It's really small. It would have to come closer. Yeah, you, you want to see what comes around, but that's the drone. Trust me, positive. Holds up the Bitcoin. Oh, maybe we should tell him to get a digital wallet. Yeah, somebody said to have him hold up a Bitcoin QR code and people will throw in. Oh, let's tell him. We will tell. Hey, so people on the internet are saying you should get a Bitcoin QR code. Ah, uh, yeah. And Somebody people will that. help you mine Bitcoin. Okay, so no, can I post it to your... Um, they want to throw Bitcoins at you. Okay, can I post it to your... Uh, uh, talk to her. She's really... I, if I don't know. No. <laughs> talk to that one. Talk to that one. It's great. Talk to that one. So, thank you so much. I'm going to grab some water. But when you see one, grab me. Thank you. It's nice talking to you. Thank you, everybody who's tuning in. Um, I'm going to grab some water. I'm actually super, super hot. Um, oh, and so wait, this is the setup of the no shoot, no loot truck. There's some barbecue. You see the old, I don't know if you could tell, but there's like a really cool like grill here. It's a little bit dark. It's got the little smokestack. <laughs> Got another girl there. Food. There's a lot of people gathered around the No Shoot No Loot truck, yeah, hanging out. Oh, if you don't want to be, chilling. huh? Eating chips, kicking it, and chilling. Yeah, food. Food brings people together, right? Huh? Food brings people together, right? Exactly. I like food. <laughs> Hi. If does anyone mind me filming? Please let me know, because I will turn this camera away from you. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. So this is the truck. Hi. How you doing? How are you? Can I film you? No. Water? Yeah. Yeah, plenty of them. Oh, well, on the back of here? Here you go. Okay, yeah, because we looked over there when it's in. How much are you buying here in this white? I think they do. Okay, you know what? There's a thing of water right here. I think we're going to grab one of those, actually. It's really hot. So everybody who's been watching this on television, I don't know if they've been telling you, but it's about, could I possibly have one? I don't know if people are telling you this on television, but this place is nearly 100 degrees. So the people that have been out here fighting for justice have literally been braving really high heat for hours. Can I film you, sir? No, we have some people who don't want to be filmed. So we try not to do that if possible and respect their wishes. I, um, I'm gonna grab a thing of water. Hello. 
So there's a big bucket right here where the, it's got water for everybody. Look. The TV channel is here. It's not a TV channel. I'm with the anti media. This is live stream. It goes to the internet. Oh. I'm with the internet. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh, it's really hot. Today was one of the hottest days. I think it was the hottest day of summer here so far until tomorrow. Hi. Do you mind if I film you? What's your name? CJ Boyd. Where are you from? Oh, we're from California too. What part? A uh, small town called Santa Maria. Nice. Uh, yeah, San Luis what brought you here? Um, this is family folks here. Uh, I'm trying to see what we can do to make a change. Um, I just got here. To be honest, uh, I drove from Denver yesterday. And um, just, just got here today. Cool. Cool. Well, it's nice to meet you. I heard you talking about the. I hadn't heard about the. Ezel Ford in LA. Ford? Yeah. Ezel Ford and Omar Abrego. Okay, and they were both shot. They were both shot and unarmed in Los Angeles, which is, I think, one of the reasons that I headed out here. Yeah. Um, and it. Uh, but the reaction has not been. The support has not been this. The government reaction. I mean, there's support in the community, but they're not in terms of the path to justice seems much more arduous and much longer, um, if even at all. And so, but Ezel Ford actually, it was an investigative stop. They don't have anything on him, but they gave the exact same rigmarole. He was shot on, in the back while he was down on the ground. Um, he had mental health issues. The police knew in the community and they uh, are withholding his autopsy and the name of the cop. And when his mom came out and saw him, they threw her down to the ground. <clears throat> and so that was, uh, I think, over two weeks ago at this point. And when they went to the DA's office, they were given a webmail email address, which is a webmaster, basically. It's like they're, it's like giving the operators uh, information, not even a phone number. So it's really hard, you know. Um, what do you think the difference is between the why Ferguson, it seems like, there's a greater chance for justice for the life of Mike Brown than there is for somebody like Ezel Ford since you're from California. What would you I mean, think if that's for? I'd be speculating. I don't personally know much about the case other than what you told me, but I would guess that uh, LA folks are a whole lot more used to folks getting gunned down all the time. I, mean, I, don't know. I assume the, I don't know what the murder rate is in St. Louis versus... It's one of the highest murder rates in the country, in St. Louis, yeah. yes. I don't know. So I, I, I don't really know. Um, yeah, I, don't know. I, I keep I keep looking at it, and you know, at some point the other day when I heard about um, I forgot his first name, but Mr. Powell who got got gunned down um, was it like four days ago, five days ago, something like that. Um, I was looking for information, and I, I think I typed something in Google, was trying to find it. And I ended up on some Wikipedia page that was just a list of everybody who's been shot by police, and it was insane. I mean, it's, it was, obviously it included people who were actually like in gun battles and stuff with police, not, it wasn't all unarmed folks, but it was so long, I couldn't really, I couldn't really get my head around it, like how many people are getting killed by police, I mean, every day around See? the country. Do you know that the government keeps no record of the people killed by police? Yeah, How does that make you feel? Well, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, I've been around this country for a while. Do you know that's a violation of our rights and their obligation to document such things? But I mean, you're saying, I mean, there's no federal police, so I assume that, like, there should be a record in St. Louis or St. Louis police killed people. Not They're not obliged to keep no comp a compiled record, and the departments don't have a standard, so it's sort of flexible. There's no compiled record of how many Americans are killed by police, right. yeah. except ones that are being um, compiled by citizens right. or civilians, rather. I, mean, I think that's fucked up, but I gotta say, we civilians and citizens need to get off our ass and do our part. And, um, 
something that's inspiring here is seeing folks. I'd say, I don't know what organization you're with or anything, but I mean, I see people here that don't have a press pass that are just here to show what's going on. And I think that's important that, that it's not about waiting for somebody to tell us what we need to know. We need to go out and find out what we need to know and help each other find out. So I'm not surprised that the U.S. government isn't keeping records. I mean, the U.S. government wasn't, at least they weren't publishing records of all the folks we killed in Afghanistan and in Iraq, but they, there actually were records. They just weren't, they ended up being leaked by WikiLeaks, but um, they weren't publishing that information until someone you know, leaked it. Um, they don't want people to know that shit. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> they don't want to know that a million people died in a war that was based on bullshit in the first place. They don't want to know that. So uh, I'm not surprised. But it is our job to find out that information and, and share that information as we can. What do you think of a government that re generally responds to physical attacks with things like violence and war? constantly telling us that we should respond to violence with peace. I just came back from Peace Fest where Al Sharpton was singing the praises of peace, but knowing the history of our government, they respond to violence, usually with violence and war. So what do you think of that sort of hypocrisy that seems to be ingrained into American culture? I think it's more than hypocrisy. I mean, they don't just respond to violence with violence, they respond to non-violence with violence. They respond to everything with violence. So. Uh, it's not just about doing different than they say, it's that we live in a fundamentally violent culture. But I mean, I've always, I'm more on the side of X than King on this stuff. I don't, I don't think, I think, I believe X said, you know, if you tell people who are, oh sorry, um, I believe Malcolm X said that uh, if you tell people who are the systematic uh, victims of violence that they should be non-violent, you do a disservice to those people, you disarm them, and ultimately you're killing them, and that's wrong. Um, I have a great deal of respect for Dr. King, but I think he was wrong about that. I don't think turning the cheek, that's some biblical stuff that that's great if you want to be a Christian about it. I'm not a Christian, I don't believe in turning the other cheek. I believe in protecting yourself, and as, as Malcolm X said, that's, that's just intelligent. Um, you, if you are the systematic victim of violence, telling you to be non-violent is bullshit. Right? It's just, it's a way, I mean that's the thing, it's a way of pacifying people. Of course, if you tell people that and they believe it, well then you're going to have uh, a herd of sheep that are easy to herd. So that's great for the people in charge, but that's not great for the people. Thank you so much. I'm with the anti-media. I'm just not wearing my press pass right now, but I'm with alternative media. We're revolutionary grassroots media. Thank you very much. I'm. Uh, my name's Lisa Bissa. Nice, nice to meet you. I do. Do you do hugs? Like I, I, I touch people. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hey. So thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, as you know, we were at Peace Fest, and it was a little frustrating to see Reverend Al Sharpton, who seems to come out of the ether every time there's a horrible tragedy and try to scoop up the families or the loved ones and kind of get them on this, uh, get this programming of responding to systemic violence with with two fingers in the air um, while people are getting shot and killed all the time. Um, there's a bunch of signs here also. You see this one? I don't want to move this stuff. There's a big cross. It says love your neighbor and then down the middle it says as you would love yourself <laughs> this one right here says let justice be colorblind the color of your skin does not justify death Let justice roll down like water. Pray for truth. 
This appears to be a rather um, religious area of the country. A lot of people seem to be turning to their faith. Hello. <laughs> there must be hundreds of stuffed animals here. I'm gonna get a light. Thank you. We have a group in, in England called the Socialist Workers Party that essentially, they used to be quite a big movement. Back in the 80s, they were like, they led a lot of the minor strikes and things like this, and they dwindled now, and they basically exist okay. in some No problem. I thought you were. Yeah, Where'd you think of? Oh, he's right there. <laughs> So, things are actually thinning out here, so I'm wondering if up on the strip, some people might have moved there. Um, the memorial for Mike Brown is tomorrow. Maybe some people are going home early. We'll probably see. Does anyone have any questions? I don't know if you can hear the crickets, but there must be like a million crickets out here. That's where they left Mike Brown, right here in the middle of the street. Thank you, Influence Freedom. Thank you, everybody. Does anyone have any questions? Is there anything you want me to ask people? As you can see, like, it's literally dead in the middle of the road. Um, cars go by, like, even when we drove by, it's almost, it, it's a little bit hard to navigate. So literally, it was in the middle of the road cars on both sides. There's people from all over the world coming through to pay their respects to Mike Brown. Is anyone protesting tonight? Um, there might be people up by where the McDonald's is. We're going to check after this. We heard that most of the people come here at sunset or go there. So most people were here when we got here, but the crowd seems to be thinning out. I'll show you. I don't know if you could see how many people there's like probably 25, 30 people out here. Cause there's more people in the parking lot. Hello. Good, how are you? Do you mind, yeah, I do. Do you mind if I videotape you? You can say no and I say yes. You can video Oh, look, we got some, we got some lovers right here. Hands up. Don't shoot. Where are you from? Down the street. Down the street. Both of us. Did you know Mike Brown? No, ma'am. My little brothers did. Yeah, were they friends? Uh, not not exactly friends, but they knew of each other. Yeah, they, yeah they, uh, they congregated on occasion. What's up? Were you here on that day? <laughs> so I put my butts in there, so be careful. I don't like to throw them on the floor. This <laughs> middle? Mm -mm. Those are American <laughs> spirits. Oh, it's American spirits. 
they last longer. I get stressed out in these situations, so I need cigarettes that can last. But they're not as strong, so if you got a scissor, you can cut them. What are your names? Sherry and Terrell. And you're Terrell? Yeah. Are you married? Yes. How long you been married? Three years. And how long you lived around here? Three years. Yeah. Three years? Three years. How do you feel about this in your, happening in your community? Sad. Yeah, do you have... It's sad, angry. Do you have children? Yes, I do. How does this make you feel, raising I mean, children ooh, in this yes. society? I mean, it's just heartbreaking. I mean, I can imagine what his mother going through. It's just a sad situation. Because I have a son that's 25 and 20, and I just worry about them every time they leave out the door. So I can imagine what she's going through. Why do you worry about them? I mean, because I know how these cops are here not far and how they always picking because, you know, they ain't picked on my son a couple of times. And, I mean, the street's just not safe, but it's just safe. I mean, every time they leave out, I'm, I'm weary. I don't uh, police brutality, but black on black violence. Yes. How do you, black on black violence? What do you, what do, how do you, what do you think is causing black on black violence? In our in our communities, in this lack community. of education, lack of jobs. Yeah, I'm stressing. I mean, don't have it, and just all her. I mean, trying to make ends meet the best way they can. They get tired of the same. Oh, you know, if they have an eviction on a record or anything, they always shut them down. I mean, it's just hard. Right. So you think poverty is playing a role in black on black yeah, violence? Yeah, sure. Do you yeah. think Do you think poverty would be playing a role on black on black yeah. violence if 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 when we ended slavery, people were given their 40 acres and a mule as promised. Uh, <laughs> it may have helped, but yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But poverty, you think, what is something. What are we going to do with uh, 40 acres? We don't know how to build nothing. Yep, well, I think slaves built this country. What are we going to do with some mules? If you had 40 acres right now, it's pretty valuable in America. I don't 40 have 40 million. acres. Give me 40 million. Keep your acres. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard to raise children in this yes, society, especially yes. children of color. Yes. Yes. I was a stepmom, mm -hmm. and both my children were black. Okay. And it was very stressful because of the nature of our society and some of the questions they would even Yes. Right. But sometimes I feel like, well, they hear now, so I just trust in God, but sometimes I, I, if I can go back, I'm, I'm scared to have any kids. You know, I wish I wouldn't have brought any kids into this world. I know people that are just scared to have kids. It really doesn't matter the color of their right, skin because right. of the way the world is right. behaving right now. Right. But especially when you have black children yes. and especially when they're targeted by the police yes. and racism in their schools right. exactly. and down the street. Exactly. So what do you think we can do to change that? Uh, you gotta educate the people. You gotta educate people. Yeah, you gotta uh, start yeah, from the start from the thought. So you gotta go back. And we gotta uh, we got to retrain our way of thinking. You know what I mean? And, and put some real education into some schools. Some uh, you know, let them know more about their own heritage. You know, uh, George Washington chopped down the tree. What you know? It ain't helping. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 starts, it starts from uh, the way of thinking. Do you then think? You got to get more parents involved in their church and home, in their church and life. It starts at home. You know what I mean? And then it goes abroad. But. See, I heard that uh, actually crime has plummeted here in in the black community since this happened. Uh, why do you think that is? Because right now we are so focused on justice for Mike Brown. So you came together around a, a goal. Exactly. Exactly. How do you think we can make that ha build more community that might be able to build that education and provide resources? Well, you got different people coming in. You got now you got uh, politicians involved, Congress involved, different um, organizations involved. And, um, you know, we off to the right path, you know, uh, once we get more unity and, uh, like I said, more people involved, then we can start from there. For sure. Yeah. What happens when all these people leave, when the mainstream media is gone, when, it, and then it fizzles question, out in the that's government? That's the question everybody's been asking. 
that's the question everybody's been asking. And, you know, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? And I think, like I keep saying, it starts with education. Education. Yes, sir. 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 Rip. That's one of your own. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course. I just need two minutes. Oh, you want to get in there? Yeah. Mm. Two minutes. I can get them back. Okay. Hold on one second. So I, just, I just need the room for me. Look at this beautiful couple right here. This is love. This young man taking a photo. Don't move. Look right here. Right there, yeah. It's beautiful, huh? Don't move. This is what happens when we come together. Thank you Thank so you. much. It's Thank nice you, to man. meet you. <laughs> that was the New Yorker talking to this couple here. <laughs> he has Bitcoin? Yeah, you get a look. Who's getting a digital wallet? You can um. <laughs> there it is, right there. Can you see that? Oh, okay. So this is the QR code. Can someone take a shot of that right I there? Got, I got. Hold on. Blow it up big on there, and I'll take a picture. Of you and at Cassandra that. Rules is gonna have this QR code on her Twitter. At Cassandra Rules. That's C A S S A N D R A R U L E S. We'll have his QR code for no shoot, no loot. For to don't if anyone wants to donate Bitcoin or anyone can mine Bitcoin, please help the no shoot, no loot truck. And if anyone would like to donate for this stream, there is a link to Ezel Ford's memorial fund at the bottom of the description. Please click on that. Please share it. The fund has about $800 on it. The family is looking at about $20,000 in bills, and they need help burying their child that was executed by LAPD. Does anyone have any questions they want me to ask anyone? Thank you, Global Rev, for helping with this stream. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Rise, for helping moderate. You're amazing. Media and you are live on Ustream. Uh, what's up, Ustream? 
What are you doing here tonight? Um, I'm out here from Mike Brown. Yeah, where are you from? I'm from Jennings, Missouri. Yeah? I'm right up the street. Did you know Mike Brown? No, me per I did not personally know him, no. But, um, anybody in the that, that I got did like you got did, I, I, my heart goes out to his family. And, and it's, it, it's sad that a that an 18 year old kid that just graduated high school and about to start college life got cut short because of a cop. You know? Thank you so much. I'll be, hold on one second when my comrades is calling me. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh. Okay, hold on. Yeah, sure. So let's get this QR code out. This is to mine Bitcoin. No, Shay on his face. Because if I focus on this, it's not look at see. This is to mine Bitcoin. No, it's to send Bitcoin. Oh, to send Bitcoin. It's not letting me do it though. You might, if you move it one closer. It's like not so. If I focus on the screen, then everything else gets real dark. You can't get it. Here I can get a space. Does that help? Yes. Please, please help the no shoot, no loot check. I know there's there are some thousands of people out here. We're gonna be at the, uh, we'll be at the funeral tomorrow. It's gonna be at over five it's five thousand seat capacity. The, they're expecting at least seven thousand, but I'm knowing it's gonna be even more than they're forecasting 7,000 people, 5,000 inside and 2,000 outside. But I know there's going to be way more people than that. Um, it's right here today. I think today was the hottest day of the year. It was 102 degrees. Um, we need water and ice to keep these people hydrated. I'm not cooking tomorrow. Um, I'm just going to attend the funeral. We're going to hand out water and Gatorade and um, we're going to buy some of these cooling towels and try to get you know keep people cool keep people from getting a heat stroke or whatever so if you guys whatever you guys can do um we would appreciate it that's the qr code right there so if anyone wants to take a screen grab and help them mine some bitcoin so people can donate now is that clear enough for them uh, I, think, I don't know i think cassandra rules is taking care of it okay she's the bomb yeah it's kind of dark but i got it pretty clear so can someone grab a screen grab but i had to get kind of close there you go. Thank you very much. Is the funeral open? It's open to the public. It's going to be at Friendly Temple. Um, it's located on Martin Luther King and Belt. That's in West St. Louis City. Um, it's it has 5,000 seats capacity. Um, there's going to be there's going to be probably another five to ten thousand people outside because the whole city, you know, not just Ferguson. I. I I want, you, I want you guys to try to understand it. If you look at the geographic area of St. Louis, if you look at St. Louis on the map, what you see, there's a loop. There's uh, there's a main highway that goes around the uh, city of St. Louis called 270. 270 encompasses all of those little municipalities like Ferguson and Berkeley and Overland and, and Kenlock and Bonita Village and, there's so many of them we don't even know all the names. The only, you know, and and for somebody who's from here who, and who lives here, the only time the name of the municipality is important is when you get pulled over. <laughs> it's like so, like I was saying earlier, on my way home, I could literally probably get stopped ten different times from ten different officers from ten different municipalities, but I haven't traveled more than five miles, five ten miles. That's and so it's all together. All of these little communities were all St. Louis, you know. So, like, when you know, before this happened, if you would have met a, somebody who actually lives, you know, lives in Ferguson, and I used to be a Ferguson resident, used to be a Ferguson resident. I only only moved a, a few miles away. If you ask me where I'm from, I'm gonna say St. Louis. I'm not gonna say Ferguson. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say St. Louis. I'm from St. Louis. Uh, you know, we consider all of those municipalities, including St. Louis City because it's St. Louis County. You see what I'm saying? Ferguson is actually run government-wise by St. Louis County. So to us, you either in the city or the county. Take your pick what the name of it is. It's either St. Louis City or St. Louis County or East St. Louis, Illinois. It's all together. It's all St. Louis to us. Thank you so much.
We'll see you there tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Anyone mind that I'm streaming? No, I've been doing it. Where are y'all from? City, St. Louis City. St. Louis? Is this yeah. your first time oh, yeah. here? So, I was down here on uh, Saturday afterwards in the end of March. That's good. Yeah, how was the March? It was huge. Yeah. There were a lot of people. Do you want to tell people your name? It's like, uh, Jack Howe. I'm Elizabeth, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Elizabeth. And so, you said, how many people were out here approximately? Yeah. I'd say, I don't know, over a thousand. I mean, there were tons. Kind of. Like the march itself. Debates thriving in kind of the anti-fascist community in London is how to deal with. I mean, like. Right. It was it was uh, a yeah, it was very communal though like going down state. with everyone. They're they're like uh, the tea it's party, very uh, but a bit more racist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very they're uniting. A, they're, they're kind of like a what was the police response party. to the they're march? Oh, they're police like, everywhere. It would be an exaggeration. There've been police everywhere, basically since it's happened. I mean, really there's more bad. police here than there are. So some, some people think right that like marching against especially them, especially down over like by the QC, sort of anti. Uh, were the police peaceful maybe, when you were here marching? Actually, a hardcore fashion. Yeah, they were. It was all during the day, which seems like there hasn't been that much conflict. My opinion, though, it's been as long as it's been a lot of. How do you feel about what happened to Mike Brown? I think it's an injustice. Then, fair enough. I mean, we really need to work on racial issues in this country okay, so they are hard, and it's like this is just this is just another case like for every one michael brown there's at least 50 that don't get covered by the news or any other like we had that scene Outlets, here, but so. at that point it said, uh, Things need to change. So you're saying we're not in post-racial uh, yeah, America like the Supreme Court decided yeah, to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, I know exactly what you're talking about. That very much upset me when they decided that. Um, yeah, I mean, we've made headway over the last, like, decades, but there's a long way to go. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Do we have a plan? Yeah, I think we're uh, waiting on and, yeah, and uh, Cassandra. Cassandra. Yeah, and they're to get ready in the counterproductive. But we've seen okay, nine. cool. You can see St. Louis. There's more people coming up. So I'm going to cut stream soon. Um, for those who would like to donate for this stream, there is a link at the bottom of the description for Ezel Ford's memorial fund. Ezel Ford was executed by the LAPD. We are from Los Angeles. Uh, here in St. Louis and they need help burying their son. Uh, he also was unarmed and had, uh, he was stopped for an investigative stop. They still have not disclosed what that investigative stop was for. Um, and he was shot in the back or not, well we don't know that they were all in the back because they won't release his autopsy report or say the name or the name of the police officer who killed Ezel Ford, um, but from what we understand, he was down on the ground. He was shot in the back three times. He was unarmed. Uh, they are saying it's the same story that they gave for Mike Brown that he allegedly reached for the gun, but the witness testimony that was there from the neighborhood contradicts what the police are saying. And of course, they will not release the autopsy report. And when his mom came out and saw her dead son, the police threw her to the ground. So. Right now, the fund has about $800 in it, and they really, really need help. So anybody who wants to donate for this stream, please donate to Ezel Ford's Memorial Fund um, so that the family can bury their son without the financial stress that comes with a funeral. Um, hi. Can I stream you? What's your name? My name is Josh Brown. Yeah. Can I sit with you? Sure. I'm tired, too. <laughs> Where are you from? From uh, Dallas, Texas. You're from. You're here from Dallas. Mm -hmm. When did you get here? Uh, about two days ago. So why are you here? Um. Well. Uh, well, I was. Uh, I watched Judge Report and uh, Infowars, and I was at my mom's house and I was watching on the news how CNN was kind of like lying on what was going on. And I get both sides of the story, so I decided to come down and help everybody out with the protest. Yeah, and how do you, what do you, what's your perspective on it now, now that you've actually been in Ferguson, on the ground? 
honestly, I think it's a beta test for martial law. Because they were only shooting tear gas and, um, and rubber bullets for maybe like a week on certain nights. And it was mainly like for peaceful assemblies and peaceful protests. And now they're, they've kind of laid off and the National Guard has actually, you know, left. Um, they haven't left actually. Yeah, well, I see. They're guarding the police command yeah. center. Yeah, yeah, they are. Down by China King and PNC, PNC Bank, maybe? It's over there by, uh. I know what you're talking about. I seen I seen the buses. They look like kind of like armored. Buses. They're armored buses, and they have several armored trucks with L. They have one with the L ride on it. Yeah. And the National Guard guards that area, so they haven't left, like the media quite told us. Yeah, exactly. They are guarding the police command center. We definitely saw them there last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, they're still here. I mean, there was a report saying that they left. I didn't know if that was true or not, but I seen them there whenever I actually got in, and. uh and so, um, yeah, I mean, seeing the militarization of our police and how they're trying to restrict us from practicing our Second Amendment right, you know, there's actually corruption right there. What's your name one more time? Josh Brown. Josh Brown. Lisa Bissa. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm with the anti-media. Cool. Um, how do you feel? So did you go to Peace Fest today? No. I went to Peace Fest. Did you? How was it? Well, you know, I really wanted to see the Brown and Martin family speak. And they came out with Reverend Al Sharpton. And there seemed to be a similar tune amongst both the families and Al uh, about uh, having uh, registering to vote to change our political landscape staying peaceful despite systemic violence against people and uh you know putting your faith in the church how do you feel about that as a uh response to what has happened to mike brown and trayvon and do you think that that tactic works do you, do, do you think that that is that is going to be the path to justice for for people i think religion is actually you know it's somebody's personal spirituality, if they want to believe in God, if they want to believe in the uh, universe as a whole, um, whatever somebody's uh, spiritual deity, that's their own personal preference, but I believe that, um, that uh, I mean, Al Sharpton has actually been called out and the new Black Panther Party for working for the FBI as an informant, so, you know, um, New Black Panther Party has actually been ran out of this city. Why? Why? Because people don't believe, people don't agree with them. Do you think, in the face of violence, that a peace sign and being peaceful works? To an extent, yes. When does it work? Well, you got to realize the militarization of our police and actually using um, excessive force is. Um, it's actually like a beta test for martial law. So, you know, actually a peaceful assembly is good, but showing that you're not gonna back down from the police is actually, you know, uh, uh, it's a good tactic too. So it kind of goes both ways. Do you think that our government, when they are, uh, um, when we have violence exacted against us, like let's say 9-11, or um, or we have an, a, a violent act here, but that's actually against the state. When have you seen our government respond with two fingers up and a peace sign? Never. They dropped the depleted uranium on innocent civilians. Uh, you know, uh, they're funding ISIS right now. Uh, the borders are wide open. <laughs> There's an Ebola scare, whether that's uh, fair mongering or not. You never know, but uh, yeah, the government, they have an agenda, and they're trying to carry out that agenda. Just really quick, I have to respond to someone here. So, just more, you're talking about my donations that I'm asking for. The donations that I am asking for is actually not for our funds. If you look in the about area, we have a separate fund to keep alternative media here. But that fund specifically is actually for Ezel Ford's memorial fund, who was executed by the LAPD. We are from Los Angeles. Ezel Ford was also unarmed. 
he didn't rob anybody. It was an investigative stop. They're not saying what it was for. His autopsy report has not been released. The name of the cop who killed him has not been released. Um, and within eight days, we had, or it was nine days, two unarmed men that were killed by LAPD. So it was Ezel Ford and it was Omar Abrego. Um, the family is trying to raise funds for their son's funeral. So I ask that people donate and share that fund. I think it's very important that some respect is paid to these families who have had losses uh, that, you know, nobody wants to lose a child. Nobody should lose a child to senseless violence like the police. So if you have a problem with the donation fund, sorry about that, but that's just how it is and it's staying up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think it's important that we represent our communities. I know that they have raised enough money for Mike Brown's funeral. And so we have to do what we can from where we're from. And I'm from L.A., so that's how it is. <laughs> you know, I, I lost a child whenever he was 52 days old from SIDS. So I understand what you mean. And we didn't have enough money for a funeral. And he was actually cremated for free through a uh, funeral organization. And it's very expensive. It is it's very expensive, even for cremation. Uh, as far as right now, I'm broke. I don't have any money. I wish I could help you. No, it's okay. You don't have to. I have people that are watching us. Yeah. So sometimes we have people that, you know, they have some comments they want to make about how we do business or how we do things or whatever it is. So that's just sort of the way that I am. Um, <laughs> but I'm sorry you lost your child. That's really hard. You know, it, and it, it's not something any parent should have to go through. How many, how many people do you have watching your live stream? Your live stream. I don't know. I can't see how many people are watching my stream because I have the chat. Can somebody tell me how many people are watching my stream right now? Because I can't actually see it for some reason. My Ustream sucks, kind of. Um, but it's being shared on the uh, Reddit feed for Ferguson. Okay. Um, and it's being shared on Global Revolution. Okay, cool. Um, so we stream directly to the internet. This is also some, a tactic that we've learned to use, uh, filming the police. Mm -hmm. Because our phones have been confiscated, our videos have been deleted. So when I hit the record button, and Ustream is free. It's yeah. an application that you can download. Yeah. So everything uploads directly to the internet. Once I videotape something, it is, it is live. Yeah. Okay, well, um, can I give a shout out? I have 51 people watching the stream right now. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Cool. Can I give a shout out? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the reason I came down here, honestly, is because I fell victim to the government um, two years ago. I was placed under illegal oh, surveillance. Oh, 200. Yeah, go ahead. And whenever you actually hear about illegal surveillance, you got InfoGuard and Fusion Centers, which are civilian spy networks that correspond with the FBI to gain intelligence for counterterrorism. I was placed under illegal audio video surveillance. Um, they actually use tactics like neurolinguistic programming, which is the conditioning of somebody before um, they actually uh, harass that person. And then before I knew it, I was being stalked by several people, actually a lot of people, who were all harassing me from the illegal surveillance that they were actually um, gaining on me through uh, coercion. So if you go to Google, um, you can type in organized stalking and you can uh, research that. And that's actually the real reason why I've woken up to the corruption of the government and why I'm down here protesting. Can I ask you why you'd be placed under illegal surveillance in your opinion? You don't have to say it if you don't want to, but... Um, there's a lot of reasons for, you know, you got, uh, you remember the case with Aaron Alexis? No, tell us about it. Aaron Alexis was a, uh, Damn, I just got to chill down my spine. <laughs> Aaron Alexis was a, uh, he worked in the Navy Yard. He had a top security access pass into the Navy Yard. Um, the Navy Yard actually, they uh, communicate via ELF, which is extra low frequencies uh, via submarine. Um, he reported to the police weeks before the shooting that he was being followed around by a group of people and that they were assaulting him with extra low frequencies, which are microwave, which is microwave technology. Um, there's patents on all of these devices. If you go to www.surveillanceissues.com, it explains the full detail of the illegal surveillance and all the patents for every single device that they use. And um, he actually contacted Freedom from Covert Harassment and Surveillance weeks before the shooting. 
He went into the Navy Yard with a shotgun and shot and killed 12 people. We have five news segments um, nationwide on organized stalking and electronic harassment. We also um, have a segment on Dr. Phil. We have whistleblowers from the CIA. We got whistleblowers from FBI. Ted Gunderson. Um, CIA is actually. Can I ask um, who you're with? You're I'm, freedom from covert harassment and surveillance. Oh, okay. So you're part of this organization. Yes. Oh, and so that is why you would be stalked. Yes, and there's a there's a few hundred thousand people a part of this organization as well. And actually, I wasn't a part of this organization before I was being stalked. Um, my ex girlfriend um, worked at a strip club, and she knew these people uh, from the strip club who were tied into some type of organization or network that could actually make this happen. And when my son passed away, they bribed her with money and whatever else, you know, manipulation tactics in order to gain her participation into selling me out. Before I knew it, I was under illegal surveillance. They get government funds for this, so it's human trafficking. And um, they use military-grade weapons on civilians, which is experimentation. Is this your sign? Uh, yes. Can you show us your sign? Sure. In the police state, resist, fight, revolution. Wake up, sheeple. Have you ever heard of the Occupy movement? Uh, yeah, actually I have. You have? What did yeah. you think of that? Uh, I haven't done too much research on it. I'm, I'm more, I'm here on my own agenda, and that is to kind of get the word out on organized stalking because it's something that everybody should know about. Um, when you hear about somebody being blacklisted by the government, when you hear about illegal surveillance on individuals, that's what it is. And we have uh, whistleblowers from the CIA, uh, Brian Tu, T-E-W. Um, you can find him on uh, Facebook. Um, he's a whistleblower from the CIA, and he blew he he blew the whistle on government corruption, and he's being harassed in the same aspect that I am being harassed in. Um, anybody from government to uh, corporate whistleblowers, all the way down to Joe Schmo, if they decide to target you, they can target you. And what is what organized talking? Organized stalking is um, basically, it's a network of people who are mainly, it, it, it composes of civilian informants who actually um, are hired on, they're told lies about an individual and paid money, and it's, a organized, it, it's basically organized community harassment. Um, it's a group of people who follow, stalk, and harass one person indefinitely, every day, all day. Interesting. Yeah. So, Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's 24 7 her it's 24 7 her uh, surveillance so no matter where you go um, you can go uh, you can go from one state to the next the harassment may lessen for a day or two um, once you get put you know for a few days it picks right back up um, it's obviously networked um, they have government funding and um, yeah so, I mean that's what they do I mean if you go to the website uh, if you just type in organized stalking into Google or you go to freedom from covert harassment and surveillance.com, which is actually freedom, F C H S dot com, um, it has more information and they can explain it better than I can. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's something that happens and the, the people who fall victim of this are actually called TIs, which are targeted individuals. Hold on one second, sorry. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, there's a few hundred thousand people who have uh, fallen victim of this uh, worldwide. How, how long do you intend to be out here? Uh, until the protest stops. Until the protest stops? Yes. When do you think the protest will stop? Until they get justice. Do you know that, I'll, that the family of Mike Brown asked that there be no protests tomorrow? How do you feel about that at the Peace Fest? Oh, uh, that's fine. If that's what they want for their son, then, you know, so be it. What about after tomorrow? I mean, if, if people choose, you know, this is, um, they got people down here like last night who were calling for revolution. Uh, Ferguson has actually just sparked like a, basically like a domino effect for people who have seen the corruption within the police force and who they're getting other orders from, which is the government, and they're pissed off. And if you want to protest, I mean, more power to you. That's what you need to do. That's democracy. Do you think our revolution will, is going to be peaceful? No. It already hasn't been peaceful, has it? No. <laughs> it's going to be bloodshed. It's already been bloodshed, hasn't yeah. there? Right, right behind me. <laughs> yeah. Right behind me. Yeah, it's going to be bloodshed. Thank you so much. No it was nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Are, you, are people going to be up there tonight? Do you know? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think they had a... Uh...
they had they had kind of like a party at a park. Peace and, Fest. Yeah, yeah, Peace Fest, and they're gonna be back up on Ferguson. So. All right. Yeah. It was nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm. I, I was with Occupy. Occupy. Okay, cool. Occupy up. LA. What's your website? Uh, the Anti Media. Anti Media. Yeah, we're on Facebook too. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna add so, you on Facebook. I'm Lissa Bissa. L I S S A B I S S A. Lissa Bissa. Lissa Bissa. No A. Oh. Just Lissa Bissa. Lissa Bissa. I got you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Oh boy. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. No. Yeah. What, no. What, what, you, what is your link on Facebook? Lissa Bissa. Oh, it's Pentagonista. But if you look up Lissa Bissa, you'll see me. Lissa Bissa. How do you spell that? L-I-S-S-A-B-I-S-S-A. -S 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 okay, I got you. Thank you. No What's yours? Oh, well, not on here. We'll talk. Just okay. Okay. No problem. <laughs> so. There are still people paying their respects. And it looks like we have some mainstream media here as well. For those just tuning in, this is the site of where Mike Brown was killed in the middle of the street and left. She's been coming out here watering the flowers. Anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, I'm watching the chat. Thank you, everyone who's tuning into the stream. If anybody would like to donate to the stream, there is a link to Azel Ford's memorial fund. Please send all donations to his memorial fund. Hi, can I film you? Hi. What's your name? Oh, what are your name? Scarface. I love that movie. <laughs> R.P. Mike Brown. Yeah, rest in peace, Mike Brown. Do you mind? <laughs> rest in peace, Mike Brown. Where are you from? Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, what are you doing here tonight? I'm just here paying my respects, man. Mike yeah. Brown brought a lot of people together, and that inspired me to come down here and see him. This is my, actually my first time down here. I didn't get a chance to stop through. Did you know Mike Brown? No, I didn't know. But it sounded like I wish I would have met him. Yeah. Just hearing about how much structure and changes I've had. Thank you. All right. What's your name? Marcellus Buckley. And where are you from? Chicago. Oh, so you're both from Chicago? Yeah, are you this friends? My little brother. Oh. So you came all the way here from Chicago? No, we actually stay here. We just been here on and off for four or five years. Did you know Mike Brown? I don't know. Actually, I played basketball with him like two or three times, but I didn't know his name. You know, uh, sometimes you don't know people when you play basketball with him. But I want to recite this poem for you, though. I wrote. I would love that. All right. Thick-skinned people. We are the people who have thick skin. Like we're narcissists in the jungle, we have the toughest in the land. From the bottom of the mud to the riches of sands, we are the people who see no difference in the color of our skins. In fact, we know that we are the same in this melting pot we're in. Where crooked cops patrol our blocks, killing our kids. Getting away with murder, where the system pulls strings like puppet masters over their heads. Even though we are strong, enough is enough, so together we pledge. For one nation under God, for which it stands. Standing side by side, my fellow sister and brother man, we are not light-skinned or dark-skinned, nor black or white. Not Chinese or Japanese or Indian or Indy, so together we fight for all equality to spread through all human rights. For we are peaceful with accents, but with our words we are lethal. For we are one, thick-skinned people. That's beautiful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Your poetry is beautiful. I wrote uh, six of them for every day I've been out here protesting. So You've been writing one for every day you've yep, been out yep, protesting. Yep, yep. Can we do another one? I would love it. Okay. I love poetry. This is called The People Versus the Police. We, the people of the United States, hold Congress to the words. They should do the same to the officers who are supposed to protect and serve. 
how can we put our trust in someone who is pushing us down when we are hurt? Instead of lending a hand, they call us monkeys like cage animals, only treating us the worst. Singing, oh, we got what we need, what will be deserved. A trainee want to be with the poison from the devil himself is only doing his work. A racist. In the disguise uniform, you can see the hatred in their eyes as they shout racial slurs only when they think they're not heard or when their actions are seen. But when they are caught, they try to cover up everything. Why do you think he fled the scene? After he silenced your voice trying to make sure you can say a thing. But now the world is your voice and together we sing. For you, Michael Brown. Hands up, don't shoot, no justice, no peace. For a fair trial and a proper burial for your soul to rest in peace. <clears throat> So hand in hand we stand hoping to overcome in these streets that justice will prevail for the people, by the people, versus the police. That's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. They've I was trying to remember it, so I, I, I just done it like three days ago. That's so beautiful. my memory is trying to keep it I used keep to do spoken word back. Oh, that's good, that's good. We have an adaptation of Hands Up, Don't Shoot. Okay. Actually, some people in the LA community had problems with Hands Up, Don't Shoot. Why? Because they said it was surrender. <laughs> and instead it became hands down, fists up. Okay. And that's what they were doing. I mean, we did hands up, don't shoot, but by the end it was hands down, fists up. Yeah, we did that hands up, don't shoot. Some guys did hands up, shoot back. So, I mean, it's been yeah, a lot. We got hands down, so hands down, right. fists up. So, yeah, I've been doing poetry, so. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Yep, we had a, uh, we actually lost. You want to hear another? Yes. Right. <laughs> hey, we're this getting some called, poetry, y'all. This morning, my soul cried. When I woke up this morning, as I began to rise, this pain called heartache had hit me and no longer wanted to be kept inside. From my bones to my muscles, rushing to my heart and mind, my emotions erupted, revealing everything I had tried to hide. Like magma in the active volcano, I wanted to harm everything in sight. But these tears, or oh, tears of mine that came rolling out of my eyes, were from the destruction of a policeman taking another one of my brother's lives. I only wish I was there to stand by your side. I know you would have been there today to watch the sun rise. Then watch the sunset through your own eyes. Oh, if you only knew what I would do to see your face. For I know doubt sees obstacles and faith sees the way. Even though the system is alive, we hope the officers won't slip away. Instead, in a year's time, we pray that a debt to society they have to pay. It will bring justice to the people and peace towards the system. But we declare it shouldn't have taken your life to create a better tomorrow from the corrupt things happening today. So we protest with pride because this, there is no way you should have died. That's why on the morning after August 12, 2014, my soul cried. That's beautiful. Thank you. We, I have about 200 viewers here, and they're saying, do them all. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> and they want to know your name. All right, my name is Marcellus Buckley. If you just Google my name, you'll they find all my information. They said his last name, Buckley. is on, one of yeah. the people chatting on my stream. Yep, so you can find all my information like that. Um, I got another poem for you guys, I guess. <laughs> This is his book right here, and he's got hands up, don't shoot. To the police who really care. To the officers who protect and serve and do their job well. Whom believe that no matter your skin color, justice should prevail. But know that the system is crooked, unjust, uncertain, and not fair. The people know that you, there are few of you, but know that you are here. The bond of love we have for each other is something we commonly share. But some of your fellow comrades don't possess this gift that is so peaceful and so beautiful and so uniquely rare. Instead, their hatred for us is as toxic as a grenade shooting out of your tanks flying in the air, hitting the ground, burning our skin and clothes, making us strip bare. But just like you weave out the bad protesters out of us, we see you are there. We appreciate you greatly. And so through our, this poem, we spread peace, love, and harmony for all humanity and to let justice be fair. This is a message brought to you by the people, from the people, to the police who have hearts that really care. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Did we get them all? I think yeah. we got them all, yeah. everyone. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. So, so. I actually have two more, but I didn't get to copy them off, so. Are you going to be here? Yeah, I'm going to be here, so. I'm going to be here everything, a while. So. So, but well, you if you take my information now, you can call me if you want to do want me to do some more poetry. I got so much poetry. Like, no sense. Are you going to be here tomorrow? Mm -hmm. so I'm going to the funeral. I'm going to go there at 6 o'clock in the morning so I can make sure my poetry gets through everybody. And the day after you'll be here? So we'll yep. think of I live here, so. But okay. I'm from Chicago, so. I'm Lissa Bissa. I'm going to look for you on Facebook. My stream posts are there, too. I'm with the anti-media, which is grassroots revolutionary media on the ground. So. Well, just, um, I can give you my poems, because actually what I've been doing is I've been handing them out to everybody, so. I would love that. There you go. Uh, hey, y'all, I'm getting some poems. Yeah, I'm uh, going to launch my Kickstarter in a 
uh, in a little while. So. And he's going to have a Kickstarter. What's your Kickstarter for? Tell us about what you're uh, doing. It's my business. It's called Heartfelt Industries because I do poetry for everything. You know what I'm saying? So, like, take this for the viewers. I love you all. So I'm going to do a poem for you guys called Sweet Thoughts. My thoughts of you are sweeter than the sweetest of nectar honeydews from the most and beautiful flowers that I choose. To sniff and smell until policies never powers from runny noses and high twos. The roses are red, the daisies are yellow, and the violets are blue. And then there's you. Standing in a million metals blossoming, I would pick you. Your essence is warming, so lovely and charming, like bees swarming. I can only have sweet thoughts of you. Well, yeah. That was for y'all, for myself. Can I give you a hug? I got more poetry in my mind. If you wanted me to say another one, I could. Do so we want another one? <laughs> We're going to wait till they answer. Do you want another one? Yeah, I want another one. <laughs> All right. I know I'm not the type. I know I'm not the type to write poems that often. But for you, my heart has something. To bless you with amazing words, I hope you get lost in. Do you remember we were young and only talking? Then we kissed, and it was like love just walked in. People yelled, get in room, when we were only holding hands walking. Just kids, drowning in love, overflowing from the faucet. Then the drain unplugged, then we almost lost it. That's why I pray and love you strong like Boston. So before I die and reach that finish line coffin, I had to put action with words, even though I'm not the type to write poems that often. But yeah. You're the bomb. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be coming looking for more. Okay. Well, just add me on Facebook, Facebook I will. or Instagram. I'm going to follow you. And, Twitter and, stuff. and when you send your stuff, let us know we've got right. something else. Because uh, what I want to do is I want to do my poetry and do pro I do personal poetry for people. So a lot of people be um, telling me their situation on life and what's going on. I can get pictures off of Facebook and, you know, put them to my USB port, download them and ship the poems to people. And I mean, people love my poetry. I mean, I've been getting people from Africa to France. They want me to do it for them. So it's, it's been a lot of love because uh, actually my, viral, my video went viral on 106 in part. And a couple oh. other things, so I just appreciate it though through the midst of chaos. So and if you ever come through LA, we're gonna come see you. Okay, that's All right. where we're at. So it's a little bit of a haul. And this is your brother. Yep. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Scarface. Oh, that's right. You're Scarface, yes, like man. the movie. <laughs> Are you a poet also? No, You're a rapper. I'm a rapper. You're a rapper. Yeah, rap. yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to make it out here in the rap game. So viewers, if you want to see some rap, some real rap, <laughs> from some guys that know what they're doing. Well, ITN Flyboys, man, you know what it is, man. Rich kids, we're trying to make it, man. It's a movement. I'm always supporting my brother, you know what I'm saying? You got some nice poet out and everybody loves it so far. And nobody denied none of that. Everybody want me to speak it. Everybody want me to speak the truth, you know what I'm saying? And but the truth. Show. Would you rap for us, or is that too much? Uh, I can't rap. Right you need now. to drop the beat, right? Too much cuss words in it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I got a little something in my system. Might <laughs> 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 mess up, but I'm yeah, really wet, you know. You know? <laughs> I want to hear it one day, though. You yeah, two seem like, you so. seem like you got poetry pulsing yeah. through your veins. <laughs> yep. you want Comes out in different ways. Oh, it looks like we're going to get some more poetry, y'all. Praying mother. I would like to thank God for my praying mama. For when I ran the streets at times, for weeks at times, and still brought home the drum. She would fast for weeks at times, and weep sometimes, and spoken tongues from her stomach. In the chair, she would sleep sometimes, just to make sure I got the food she left in the oven. But I was in the streets sometimes, so deep sometimes, being mischievous with the others. I would call ahead of time, and she would know home is where a child wasn't coming. The Lord is my witness for those troubled times, her prayers were my cover. That's why I thank God for my praying mama. For the good times and the bad times, her child was out there suffering. Yeah, Facebook, not sure about Twitter. They want to know if you're on Twitter. My Twitter name is like 928743624, so I don't even know my Twitter name. To be honest with you guys, I need to change it, so I'm sorry. But Instagram, uh, Marcellus underscore DA underscore poet. So you can find me on there. Follow me on Instagram. Your boy watching it underscore flyboy. You know what I'm saying? Check me out. You know? You're gonna have some raps coming out about yeah, what's going on right out. here. Yeah, I might do a rap by Michael Brown. You know, 
Yeah. You gotta hit us up because you know we're in LA and that's where we yeah, got the yeah. stuff that makes the music in the video. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I want to do too. And that's, music is, well, I'm a filmmaker, so you should hit us up. I'm trying to build my brand, up. you know, so that's, that's why I'm doing yeah, my Kickstarter, so it's coming soon. So. Well, they reappropriated yeah. hip hop and rap because it was a powerful tool, so now it's all about bitches and hoes. See, that's, <laughs> not, that's not right. And, and they, take, they took away the voice, they took yeah. away what it was right. actually see, about, which was the struggle. And I know the truth, and I know who he is. I've been through the struggle, and I know how to connect on people on a different level. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to talk about rich, my money, and this and this and that. I can just connect on on a different level. I don't like a lot of people poetry. I think they're good, but I feel like my poetry uplifts. You know, so that's what I do it for, just to uplift the people. That's why when they see on Instagram, just Marcel's the poet, a poet for the people, by the people. You know, I'm for y'all, so that's what I do. Beautiful. You gotta come out to LA. All right. You gotta get your stuff. Y'all gotta fly me out of there. You know what I'm <laughs> like, look, we gonna do. We got these events going on. We want you to come and recite some poetry. You have a strong on? voice. Uh, we flew away. We actually had to go fund me to get us here because we do. I mean, I went. To, I actually went to film school and I just finished my master's in screenwriting. But after that, I joined the Occupy movement. Right after I finished my master's at UCLA. Okay. See, I don't have none of that. I joined the Occupy movement and I learned a lot about Hollywood and mainstream okay. media. So now I work for alternative media Is and that we where work you're from? for free. I'm from New York. Okay. Well, I'm going to do another poem for you again. <laughs> Let me think of which one I'm going to do. I'm in heaven. Okay. This is one I did for Valentine's Day for a lot of guys that go through a lot of things with their girls and relationships. It's called The Deeper I Look. The deeper I look into your eyes, I see life. I see kids, picket fences, and you as my wife. Don't be surprised that we argue at times over cheating and lies, even abuse, disrespectful words that scarred you at times. Know that I can only change and put that demon aside. And admit as a man I had pain I couldn't fight off a high. Now I hope that you forgive me because I love you more the deeper I look inside. Into your soul's windows, those beautiful eyes. But yeah, thank you. That's beautiful. I'm going to find you. Okay. Let us know. Hey, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Can you tell me about the Occupy, how you got into it, what that was all about? Uh, this is actually the chat that's... Oh, hi, Mama Sunshine. Sorry, that's actually my Mama Sunshine from Occupy LA. How did I get involved in Occupy LA? Um, it's nice to meet you. I just finished uh, grad school, and uh, I had uh, went to speak in, uh, in Europe. <laughs> Yeah. And I thought that I was maybe, I was going to be a screenwriter or be an academic. And then um, when I came back to L.A. literally like a day after, people started posting that I knew in New York on Facebook that were at Occupy Wall Street. Yeah. About Occupy Wall Street. And I was like, oh yeah, fuck the corporations. Because when I came out of my undergrad, I worked for Viacom. Yeah. And I worked in their technology think tank. And we, um, when 9 11 happened, um, you know, I worked at the, on the 50th floor at 1515 Broadway, which is like 48th Street. You have to go through Times Square. Right. And so when 9 11 happened, I was about running about a half hour late to work because they stopped the train for about 20 minutes, which is unheard of yeah. in New York City. And they wouldn't tell us why. And then when they let us out, I walked out the train station and you couldn't walk. You couldn't walk through Times Square. It was so crowded. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, the stock market crashed. Because the stock market was about to crash. That was all the buzz at that moment. That before the stock, 9-11? Right before 9-11, the stock market was about to tumble. Okay. Which is something that I just sort of, you know, I just sort of touched in my head. But then I saw, because all these men in suits were staring up at the screens. And when you work in Times Square, you don't look at the screens anymore. You go there every day. Right. But then I saw a woman crying. And when I saw the woman crying, I turned and I looked. And I looked at the screens and I was like, is this all over like Michael Bay's next movie? Because <laughs> they were replaying the first plane hitting the tower. Yeah. And then as I got closer to my job, 
it went live and the second plane hit. There was no video of the first plane hitting. They were, they were, they, I, I believe there was footage of the first and the second plane. They were replaying the first plane. There's I mean, that's what, that's what George Bush says. No, there was footage of both because they were replaying the first one and then we went live and I saw the second one. And then I went into my building and I went up and I did what I did every day, almost like a robot. I got a right. yogurt parfait and then there was a girl crying on the floor in the elevator base. And I stopped and I realized that there were people in those buildings. Yeah. It was a very slow process. It was step by step. And I was like, I didn't know. I was like, was, was it like you didn't want to believe it at first or you just didn't it's know? It's just the way tragedy impacts you. Like yeah. I went and got a yogurt parfait. I just walked watched a plane <laughs> go into the building. So I went and I got this yogurt parfait and, um, th and I was like, if she cries for one more minute, cause I didn't know her, I'm going to talk to her. But then a woman ran up. When I got in the elevator, I was like, oh my God, my coworkers are going to freak out when I tell them what's going on. I get to the 50th floor and everybody's up against the windows. Of course they know what's going on. I work for the media. Yeah. <laughs> and we watched people jumping out of those buildings. And there was another plane over New York City. So I went to one of the chief officers and I said, I'm not comfortable with us staying in this building right now, the tallest building in Times Square. Right. Because there's another plane, and it was ultimately the plane that crashed in Pennsylvania over New York City right now. I think it's dangerous. Everybody knows that Times Square is a, a potential target, and so is the Twin Towers, or so they say, or whatever it was. Yeah. And the chief, one of the, it was one of the chief officers said, you know, let me call upstairs where Summer's office is and, uh, you know, see what we're going to do. And he got back to me, and he said, okay. He goes, we're all being evacuated to the MTV cafeteria. And if anyone leaves the building, they're going to get fired. Wow. So I took the elevator as my coworkers start taking the stairs, just like they're doing at the Twin Towers. But I was like, fuck this. I'm taking the elevator. And I walked in. There's one was like, hi, excuse me. Are you here for internship training? And I turned on the TVs. And I was like, I don't think you're going to have internship training today. And the first building falls, like almost like literally 20 seconds later on the television. And people started flooding in, and my a couple of the the, the lower coworkers, not the vice president, not not the chief officer that was for my for our tech for tech, come in, and we're all sitting at that table. And I was like, I'm really uncomfortable being here right now. I was like, I'm sorry, like I didn't want to stay. And one of my coworkers was like, me neither. And we both decided in that moment to leave. Right. And as we walked outside, all the chief officers and vice presidents were leaving with all of their employees on the ninth floor. Yes. And in that moment, as a, we caught a cab miraculously, like literally like two minutes later. But in that moment, I realized they really don't give a shit about us. <laughs> I mean, they really, they were salvaging their own lives. Right. They were as comfortable as we are. They are just as, they are humans just like you and me. But they were willing to let everybody in that building suffer something that they themselves didn't want to do, which was stay in an area that was possibly under threat. You know, and I went home and it was absolutely a tragedy. I had people piling through my door. You could smell death throughout the city. And then we had anthrax sent to our job and we were having bomb threats. And like three days later, they wanted us back and work the next day. And so I started coming back to work. I think I waited three days. I wouldn't go back in. And I was crying every day. It was just tragedy. Yeah. And then they had us go through work. They have all these employees coming in. We have an an We had anthrax actually sent to our building. Our mail's getting screened. We know that people are threatening our lives. And then right before Christmas, they laid off about one third of the company. Wow. So they made everybody go through that. And I, it's just, you realize that these corporations lack a sense of humanity mm -hmm. and that and they're they they are a monopoly that controls so much of of the voice of the people or they 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 claim to be the voice of the people right. I mean, at that point i don't think when i showed up at occupy that's kind of where i was at that moment i've come a long way 
from just knowing that corporations are corrupt, that they are willing to let leave us in buildings that are potential, you know. Can you talk a little bit about that journey? What else you've learned since then? Um, what else? I mean, I learned a lot. I mean, it just it went way beyond corporations. I mean, it went to actual capitalism and how that functions in our society because I was definitely a capitalist. I just finished UCLA. I just went to Europe. I was in Paris buying right. perfume just like everybody else. You know what I mean? And I didn't understand how having sort of this materialistic society where we, we, we buy things because we want them, but not because we need them, and we perpetrate an economic system that's based on based on the concept of us having infinite resources, and we don't have them. We're trained like dogs to think we need things that we don't need. Right. So let me ask you this. Are you no longer a capitalist? Did you turn communist? I mean, where are you? <laughs> I'm no longer necessarily a capitalist. I mean, for like, I just had a family, so... I did have like the economic stress. You do want to have things for your children. Right. Like your kid doesn't need dance lessons, mm -hmm. but you know it's good for their soul. But do I buy Jimmy Choo shoes? No. Right. You know, so there's sort of, I definitely purchase a lot less. I'm more thoughtful about the things I buy. I right. understand the impact it has on the world. I also understand now the role white supremacy plays. I mean, that wasn't something I was thinking about. Now, when you say worldwide supremacy. Well, no, white supremacy oh, in white our supremacy. society. Okay. And sexism and patriarchy. And then that was like part of the, those were the things I had to learn in that journey. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, because there's some controversy on the internet. Some people say there were no planes on 9-11. And you were there. I mean, have you spoken with people who specifically said they saw an airplane? There were people downtown that saw what happened. I mean, there was enough witnesses. It wasn't that there was no planes. The question what is really... The, now, when I returned to work, so I worked with some of the biggest, like some of the best engineers in the country, right. right? Even though I was just doing research for the department. I mean, these people went to Princeton. They went to Andover. You know, and it was weird because for like two weeks, the engineers would stare out the window at where the Twin Towers were, and they couldn't figure out how the buildings fell. Right. <laughs> We're having, he's asking this is about deep. Occupy. Come on, be a part of it. <laughs> they couldn't figure out how those buildings fell. Sure. And so I, I've talked to people who are architects. The demolition was very clean. Now, you use the word demolition. <laughs> so, you're not a no-planer. I'm not a truther either because I'm actually not an engineer. You know, I'm, I, I was just somebody that is pretty good with technology, that is really good at research. I don't, I think that we really need to form civilian-based uh inquiry groups like and I know that the evidence was buried I know that families didn't get you know parts of their body members of their family members bodies like I had a friend he lost his brother and his cousin yeah. they were both firefighters from Staten Island Staten Island was one of the first places that had firefighters to res that responded on 9-11 and you know the the, the families got paid off and my friend has since like practically lost his mind. He, with the money that they gave him, he bought a dolly and put it over his toilet. Like it was like, like they're so they were completely um, denied any sort of uh, information about the event. Like they weren't given full disclosure, and they yeah. lost their family members. Okay, let me ask you this, because you said... Are you on stream? Oh, yeah, we're live. Wait, show. what's your stream? Tell my viewers. Oh, yeah. I got about 200 viewers right now. My name is Harry Link, and I'm the founder of Truth Broadcast Network. And on Truth Broadcast Network, you can actually change channels through the streams. But my stream is on a live stream, and you'll find it by putting in Ferguson Sion. And what I'm curious about, because you say you're not a truther, but you were an Occupy... What is the dividing line there where you could be an Occupy, but you can't be a truther? What, what's oh, the there's truthers in Occupy, but for me, I have a I have a very logical, scientific mind. I really need the hard evidence. I, I don't, I think that the demolition, I think it looks like demolition. Yeah. I think that it was a very clean fall. I was watching people jump. I mean, people were jumping out of the building. Those yeah. were not like, we had a clear shot, even though they look so small. 
you could see the people on the news footage like corresponded with what we saw because uh, 1515 Broadway is one of the tallest buildings um, well, let's in, not dwell on no, but you could stuff. actually, but I mean, so that, but that stuff actually happened. The yeah. question is why those buildings fell, why building seven fell. And I, I know that they had government operations in building seven. Like I'm yeah. well aware of that stuff. So it's like, was the evidence in building seven? Was there really a plane in Pennsylvania? What happened in the Pentagon? Well, I guess what it comes down to is, you know, do you, don't you think somebody else had a motive for these things? Like Larry Silverstein, the buildings were full of asbestos. It's cheaper, quicker, and easier for him to demolish, get the insurance money. And you get to start a war. Right, exactly. I mean, there's <laughs> there's a, a lot of different reasons. So, I mean, what, what do you think of the concept that, you know, we're not dealing with individual governments here that are controlled by innocent people who are fairly elected, but there's actually an evil New World Order controlling the world and, you know, I mean, I think that I have problems. I, I'm just, just for our, my my viewers. I think it's interesting that we're talking about this here because it seems that 9/11 was a catalyst for a lot of things, and especially the militarization of the police. So, for people who think this might be off topic or whatever, like I actually believe that this is the foundation that brought us to the point that we're at, including the Patriot Patriot Act, including the militarization of the police, including the war in Iraq. This was sort of the gift certificate to the government to create DHS, to create what we go through with TSA, to give the DHS donated a bit. What happens with these with the police is they offer them grants and these police departments want the money but to have the money they have to take the equipment from DHS which includes the surveillance cameras in your communities includes the tanks includes the militarized includes the militarized gear so I I think this is totally relevant what we're talking about well, with I mean, we're, we're standing here at the memorial with somebody that was gunned down and while some of the local residents are frustrated and protesting, the nation at large has moved on to watching their football or their American Idol because, you know, they've been conditioned to accept the fact we've got LRADs and armored personnel carriers running around. And it's what they said on the day of 9-11, there's going to be a new normal. Well, welcome to it. This is the new normal where your fellow citizens are gunned down and it doesn't even hardly affect you. I mean, that's what's going on, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't believe in a quote-unquote new world order. I think that th this is a little bit more disorganized, greedy chaos. So when people use words like new world order, when they use words like Illuminati, like that to me is a little outside of logic. I think we, we've got a few really greedy motherfuckers, and sometimes their stuff works together, and sometimes it doesn't. I do have concerns, however, I mean, we are increasingly getting stripped of our democracy. Obviously, Occupy didn't work because the things are getting worse. Like, everyone thought if they sent the dirty campers home, you know, <laughs> that for some reason it would get better. But we have more and more people getting gunned down in our communities. We have more and more surveillance equipment. We have more and more DHS. I don't know if it was intentional to give them privy to sort of put this country under a under the fascism that we are now that will possibly transcend to tyranny which gets really ugly which means it's mike brown in many communities well, order out of chaos down. right the phoenix rising from the ashes this is all part of the process and you know if you look at there's a video on youtube called does the u.s sponsor revolutions you know this is how they change the government in algeria tunisia egypt libya just go on down the list this is what is going on here in the united states with occupy but they can't see it. They're being used like tools by the New World Order to create civil unrest here. That's something you probably don't want to hear and wouldn't agree with, right? I mean, I'm the wrong person to ask. I'm a community organizer in LA. I never had anybody force me to do anything. I yeah. have a very um, organic way of facilitating space. I don't even call it organized protest. So I don't actually believe in controlling people. Okay, but let me ask but, you this, because you just used the word facilitating. Right. At Occupy, you had, quote unquote, facilitators. And they used the mic check, which was the Delphi technique of mind control. People need to Google that. They need to look it up, figure it out. I wasn't a facilitator, and I did have a problem with the process. I do know that the GA model was like the actual, oh, so now we're talking about Occupy, guys. So. The process that we had at Occupy, there's been a lot of contention about it because there was actually no consensus for the process. It was there already. 
And I had came up against a lot of people when I tried to break process, like have people sit in a circle and just talk and organize. <laughs> and people, people, there was one person that had a total uproar. Some of my comrades were like, that's raver technology. I'm in, yeah, they're my comrades. <laughs> you see, you're just throwing off these key words. <laughs> well, what, what's your name? It was great talking I'm with I'm Lissa Bissa. Okay, good talking with you. What's your name? Harry. Harry. Truthbroadcastnetwork.com. And you're on live stream. Yeah, we're live streaming right now. There so, he is. Do you have a website? Uh, I'm with the Anti Media. Okay, don't and, go to the Anti Media. No. <laughs> no, and I'm on UStream. It's Anti Media. Okay, Anti Media on UStream. As my comrade, we're making you nervous. Oh, it's not making me nervous. I've seen it coming. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a good night. All right, guys. I think my comrade word freaked him out. Anyway, but we'll go back to. We moved a little bit far. I think that we might be going somewhere. Are we going anywhere? I was thinking hotel. Should we, yeah? We're yeah, thinking about going we have home? to get up and... I go gotta finish an article. Like nine. We gotta get up and we have to... I mean, I want to be at the courthouse by nine. Hi, sunshine. How are you? Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I'm probably going to cut stream soon. Um, we're really tired. Our trip here was like uh, 14 hours, and tomorrow is the funeral for Mike Brown. We will be streaming streaming live in the morning. Some people are getting there super early. We're gonna. They they have a capacity for about 5,000, so it's gonna be a long day and it's gonna be a hard day. I don't know if you saw the. Roses. Um, but. <laughs> Hi, Rise. You're funny. <laughs> I know I scared him with the word comrades. I mean, you know. When you're out there fighting for justice for a couple years, you're not friends, you're not family, you are kind of comrades. I, I don't really like the military reference, but I don't have another word. So let's take one more look here. Yeah, he got freaked out about the word comrades. But here's the Trail of Roses. They're really pretty. And it's in the middle of the street, as you can see. Like, I, it's almost like straight in the center that Mike Brown sat. Thank you to everybody who's been tuning in and watching and letting them know that the world is watching and that we will not sit quietly as police execute and serve as judge and jury for civilians just trying to walk home from the store. Oh no, Rise, you keep thinking I'm talking to cops. That's really not good. I don't like to talk to cops. <laughs> or whatever they are. Strap for. Who knows? 
I just don't understand why we just can't live. I mean, look how beautiful people are. Look how beautiful people are when they come together, even over tragedy. You know, people want to talk. They want to break bread together and eat food. Yeah, I'm going to the funeral tomorrow. You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in. If anybody would like to donate, um, I, there is a donation link at the bottom of my description for Ezel Ford's Memorial Fund. I ask that anybody who wants to donate to please donate to Ezel Ford's Memorial Fund. It is in the about section of my stream. Uh, his family, Ezel Ford was gunned down by LAPD. He was executed, he was shot in the back, he was unarmed. <clears throat> his autopsy report has not been released. The name of his killer has not been released. We had two unarmed men killed within nine days in Los Angeles, Ezel Ford and Omar Abrego. I ask that people please, please help the family with the funeral expenses. It's really hard to have your children, <laughs> your child die before you, let alone be murdered by police and then be strapped with having to pay for a funeral. I'd like to see him have a proper burial. It's really important. So if you can't donate, please share. Please ask other people to donate. <laughs> Only cop I spoke to tonight. Let's see what time the funeral is. I heard like 9, 10. I'm not sure. But let me ask. I'm sorry. Do you know what time the funeral is tomorrow? It's at 10 o'clock. Do you mind if I film you? What's your name? My name is Chris Griff. You want to tell them what time the funeral is tomorrow? It's at 10 o'clock tomorrow, and I can't remember the location, I'm sorry. Where are you I'm from? I'm from Minneapolis. Actually. You came here from Minneapolis? Yes. Why did you come? Um, I work with low-wage workers in Minneapolis who are building a campaign for $15 an hour. And we heard about what was going on in Ferguson. We figured about for any support and solidarity that we possibly can. And so what's happening here is inspiring. It's changing the world. And what the folks have already done here, they're making history. And uh, we're down to see what's going on and see if there's anything. Thank you so much. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, yes, Josh said he lost a child to SIDS. Um, Influence Freedom, who we had on, on earlier. So this is the memorial site. I'm going to cut stream. I appreciate everybody who's tuned in. My name is Lisa Bissa, and this is the Anti-Media. I will be back up tomorrow. Have a good night, y'all.